Praise the Lord. Um, I'm happy to be in Yola. Um, I want us to thank you. I want us to honor Bishop Macanto and his dear wife. Let's give them a big God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. And I extend my appreciation to the entire leadership of this great church, this great ministry. I know that um, we have come, I saw quite a number of people outside and people in here. The Lord will satisfy your hunger in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know that um, the time is long gone, so let's see what God is going to help us do within the time that we have. Can you lift your hands and just cry, asking the Lord for an encounter tonight? Go ahead and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Give him all the praise and ask him to visit you. The Bible says, For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Let our King be lifted up, Hosanna. Let our King be lifted up, Father, we pray and ask you to visit us tonight. Let your word come with power. Change our lives. Transform us even by the power of your word. Spirit of the living God, we grant you unrestrained access even in this place. And to Jesus be all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. And like... Um, our bishop requested may I let my voice with him to ask that we be attentive the Word of God comes to build us the Word of God comes to empower us and the Word of God comes to enlighten us it's important that we understand that God's method has always been his word when God wants to lift a man, he grants him access to his word. When God wants to transform a man, he grants him access to his word. When God wants to change a man, he grants him access to his word. When God wants to heal a man, he grants him access to his word. When God wants to deliver a man, he grants him access to his word. Are we together? So all that profits the believer in this kingdom comes through the channel of his word and perhaps you may have heard me say it in my teaching like the word of god is like a tray please let me have your attention if you want to serve a visitor usually if it's someone that you respect and you love and honor you would put a number of things on the tray am i right you will have your meal you will have juices and the moment the man sees the tray coming he may not know particularly what is there but he's happy because he knows that whatever is on that tray is for his good now that tray is the word of god every time you see the word of god coming it's like a visitor who is about to be served and everything is put on that tray on that tray is healing on that tray is deliverance on that tray is lifting on that tray is restoration 
Now listen carefully. When you drop the tray and serve the person, there are times that out of all that is on that tray, the only thing the visitor may take is water. Is that true? Now, but that does not mean you did not offer him that much. He chose as an act of his will to just take a cup of water. But there are a few hungry visitors who even before the arrival of that tray, they will help you bring it down. Am I right on that? And they will move from rice to swallow to the juice to everything plus the toothpick. Everything on that table, they must make sure they partake of it. That means that whatever you go out of here tonight with may not necessarily be an expression of all that God wants to give you, but all that your desire and hunger was willing to receive. For some persons, like a few visitors, you may just come and take even a sip of water, whereas there is so much for you, the power to change your family, the power to rewrite your story, the power to bring an end to all kinds of oppression but there are others i know not many of them but i know there are certainly others in this place who are ready to receive every single thing that the word of god is bringing if that is you shout a loud believing amen <laughs> hallelujah the second thing i want you to know is that conferences like this are a bit different from crusades now listen carefully in a crusade or in an evangelical outreach the ultimate goal is to be able to communicate christ as savior to all who are there are we together the end point of that entire crusade is to help them experience christ as savior so your emphasis, you don't go on a crusade ground teaching finances. You don't go on a crusade ground teaching the mysteries of the kingdom. Because most of those who come there, it's expected that most of them have not really encountered Jesus. Am I right on that? But a believer's conference like this, listen carefully. A believer's conference like this captures all that should be in a crusade plus the truths that now help the believers to become people of maturity and stature are we together now that means in a crusade ground you don't need a pen and paper to write you just need your ears to listen and your feet to take a step of faith but in a believers conference like this it's important that beyond hearing your heart must be attentive because the truths of the kingdom will now be taught it will be more than preaching are we together now to preach means to declare to teach means to explain you see it is in that explanation that understanding is established and on the strength of understanding you can now make quality product or uh, quality progress in your christian experience are we together now that means that as the word of god comes no matter how short the time is yours is to listen expecting that the word of god is coming for those who are not saved it comes for you as a word that beckons on you to make jesus lord of your life but then for those who are saved now the process of efficiency begins as you'll be learning are we together now so my assignment tonight is to walk you through a pathway um, to be able to show you why many believers are efficient in the kingdom while others seem to be very very ineffective and why god seems to single a few people out and to use them so mightily and powerfully whilst there are many others who may even be desiring like some of you here you've had dreams you've had visions you've seen yourself in dreams many of you may have received prophetic words that attest to the fact that you there is the call of god upon your life but not knowing the pathway to move from step a to step b you may live a very frustrated ineffective christian life are we together now so let's start wherever we stop god will grant us grace and of course you know that as you listen once the spirit of god is in a place the assignment of the spirit of god is to bring all things in that place to the obedience of christ 
That means as the Holy Ghost is bringing you revelation, if he finds anything that desires and demands correction in your life, he will not jump it. The assignment is not just to bring you the word, but that everything in your life that is not a capture of the will of God must be edited out. Are we together now? So if the Holy Ghost is passing and bringing you a word and he sees that there's some kind of yoke and oppression upon your life, that becomes his assignment also to insist that your life becomes free from that oppression. Are we together now? Let's begin our reading from the book of John chapter 17. We'll read two scriptures. John chapter 17 from verse 3. John 17 and verse 3. Amelia, you may help us so that we can have it projected. John chapter 17 and we're reading verse 3. Let me quote for the sake of time. The Bible says, and this is life eternal. Jesus is praying to the Father now. This is life eternal, he says, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Jesus is speaking to the Father, and he's saying that this is life eternal. We'll just stop at verse 3. That they may know thee. That means what you call eternal life in the mind of God is not just something that happens after you finish the prayer of salvation. What you receive at the point of salvation is only the beginning of a vast journey that will transform you to become something exact. Are we together? Second scripture very quickly, 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. We'll read verse 11 and 12. 1 John chapter 5. It says, and this is the record that God had given us eternal life. Do you believe that? It said, and this life is in his son. Next verse. 12 now. It says, he that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath life. So let me begin my teaching now. It is important that in your experience with God, the foundation, listen carefully, the foundation of the, the journey of any man who will eventually be in Christ and will be mightily used by God, the foundation of the believer's journey is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God. Now, it matters that I define for you this protocol because no matter how far you seemingly are in the things of God, in church, around church, maybe serving in the house of God, if you have not encountered Jesus, the son of the living God, as far as God is concerned and as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned, you have not begun your faith journey. The faith experience of the believer begins at the point where you declare the lordship of jesus over your life as simple as this is you will find out that not following this sequence is the reason why many believers have their christian experience already messed up because the foundation they are not able to teach and mentor others because they did not even know how they got into what they call the faith experience they just found themselves around church for a long time and out of loyalty to a man of god or loyalty to a department or loyalty to a unit they started graduating from prayer secretary to become the head of department eventually they were ordained as a pastor and they cannot trace exactly they can trace their efficiency in church they can trace their being around the things of god but from the realm of the spirit there is no record that they truly began a faith journey are we together now when a student gains admission please look at me as soon as the student gains admission he holds his admission letter but an admission letter is not the same as lectures. Admission letter is not the same as a certificate. Are we together now? But how many of you know that there are many people you find around the campus? They sell things. They, are, they were even born within the campus. They can even help you who has the admission and show you things. Yet they are not students. 
Am I right on that? They know where the faculties are. If you are confused, you can even come to them and say, please, I need to know where the shop is, where the laboratory is, and they'll say, oh, I know it. They will help you. And yet, their longevity within that campus environment, the campus does not bear record that they exist. That people will come and pass, people will come and pass, ordinary people will come and even become professors in that campus. And there are people who were born and bred in that campus, but they did not satisfy the condition that makes for admission, the condition that makes for being a student, nor the condition that makes for graduating. This is how it is in the kingdom. Are, are we learning already? So just because you are around the things of God, just because you were born by Christian parents, just because you were forced or you had an opportunity to participate in evangelism, these things are wonderful. But when you begin your journey with God, no matter how long you have been, you have to come back and start with Jesus. The beginning of the journey is not church. The beginning of the journey is not a man of God. The beginning of the journey is not a crusade. The beginning of the journey is not even a church appointment. The Bible says, this is the record that God had given us eternal life. But that the administration of that eternal life depends on your encounter with the Son of God. That means if you meet an angel, he cannot give you eternal life. If you meet a man of God, we are only ushers. We do not have within ourselves as a product eternal life. Are we together now? That eternal life only resides within the office of Jesus the Christ. And that it is only when you encounter Jesus the Christ, then you receive this eternal life. It says, and this life is in his son. So that whoso has the son can boast and say he has life. Are we together? Now, watch this everybody. I'm holding this mic on my hand. This is a microphone. Am I right on that? If you claim to have access to this mic I am holding and yet you have never met me to collect it, it means you are a liar. Because let's assume that I am the exclusive distributor of this mic. That means anytime you see anyone holding this mic, that is already a sign that you have met me. Am I right on that? So if you find people moving around telling you I'm holding a mic, yet they do not know me, yet they have not met me, is either what they are carrying is fake are we together now? Yes. So we have many, many believers who talk Christian talk, who are sincere people, but they wonder why demons do not obey them. They wonder why yokes and curses remain regardless what happens. Because there is something, the, re the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. There is something it must see to respect you. There is something it must see to obey you. The sons of Skiva had been watching deliverance and they just took it upon themselves to cast somebody who had a spirit. And the spirit replied and said, Jesus, I know. The custodian of eternal life. Paul, I know. A beneficiary of eternal life. But who are you? In other words, we do not see there is no authorization to obey you from the realm of the spirit. There is no basis to obey you. Is someone learning already? Now, sometimes, in a bit to get very deep in spiritual things, pastors make the mistake of downplaying, following this protocol and this pathway. So you find many believers who are full of rema, revelation, but they have not encountered Jesus. They've just been around an environment that is sound in doctrine, and that's wonderful. An environment that prays, and that's wonderful. So you find people who pray, you find people who fast, you find people who can teach, but the truth is they are not saved. Listen, 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 listen. We're on a journey. Are we together? So the Bible says, this is eternal life, life eternal, that they may know thee, the one true God. They may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. You may have heard me say, the greatest need of an unbeliever is not healing. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not deliverance. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not favor. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not prosperity. 
These are needs. But in the mind of God and from an eternal perspective, are we still together? The greatest need of an unbeliever in order of eternal priority is his salvation. That means every time you see an unbeliever, no matter what he's asking you for, whether he's asking you for a job, whether he's asking you to pray for breakthrough, whether he's, you can do all those, but that from an eternal perspective, nothing else about that person will bring satisfaction to the heart of the Father until and unless that individual encounters Jesus the Christ. So being evangelical has nothing to do with being an evangelist. It has everything to do with loving God and understanding what brings joy to his heart. Are we together now? So your drive to see sinners saved is not because you are called into the fivefold ministry. Your drive to see sinners saved is not just because um, you just want to show you are spiritual or a man of God. That drive stems from number one, your genuine love for Jesus. Are we together? Number two, your love for them. Number three, your desire to bring joy to the heart of the Father. Knowing that this is what pleases the Father most. Do we understand so far? Yeah. So, when you want to begin a journey to a life of exploits, it is not just discovering purpose. It is not just getting a job. Those things are wonderful, but they only find their value when you have encountered the Son of God. You ask an average person, show me the pathway to becoming a great person. They may say things like discover yourself, discover purpose, and start going forward. And they are not wrong necessarily, except that the protocol starts with Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Shout it. Let the devil hear. Say Jesus. Jesus. Now, please, are you getting what I'm teaching you? Yes. Something else I need to tell you about Jesus. <laughs> Not every information about Jesus translates to salvation. Listen carefully. Not every information about Jesus translates to salvation. There is a specific information you must believe about Jesus to be saved. For instance, believing Jesus was a Jew does not save you. Are we together now? Yes. That is a correct information. He came as a Jew. But that is not the condition for salvation. Number two, believing that Jesus was a good man, believing that Jesus was a sinless man, that is not what saves. Believing he was born of a Virgin Mary is a fact, but that is not what saves you. There is an exact information you must believe about Jesus to be saved. So there are many people that believe in Jesus, but they have not believed the condition necessitated for salvation. The Bible says even the demons believe and they tremble. Yet none of them has salvation. Because there are certain things that you must believe about Jesus to be saved. Are we together now? Yes. That you must believe in his substitutionary sacrifice. You must believe that he died but not that, that he did not die for himself. There is an exact information Paul, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says when the Holy Ghost came upon them and people came and thought that they were drunk with new wine, Paul said, no, this is early in the morning. We are not drunk, but this is that. Now, Paul began a very sound exegesis of the gospel. Are we together now? From David, he went to Joel and he said, let it be known to you, O Israel, that this same Jesus you have crucified has today been exalted as Lord and Christ. That was his gospel. When he preached that, the Bible says the people were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Paul replies by saying, repent for the remission of your sins. Then he says, and you shall receive this promise. He says, for this promise is unto you and unto your children, to your children's children. Even as many as are far off, as many as the Lord will call. Are we learning now? Yeah. So there are many, many things about Jesus that believers do not know. Let me show you what you have to believe about Jesus to be saved. Is someone learning already? I'm taking it very simply because I don't want you to come and waste your time. And after a conference like this, a lot of believers, you know, they get happy 
people fall down they stand and then you ask them what what changed in your life they say well i don't know all i know is that i enjoyed the meeting no there should be a definite traceable transformation are we together pray in the spirit in one minute and then i show you the message of the gospel that everyone must believe Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 10. Please give us Romans chapter 10 from Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 Romans 10 and verse 8 but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach verse 9 it says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus the word Lord Jesus there means the Lordship of Jesus are we together and that you believe in your heart now notice when it has to do with receiving salvation the new birth your heart and your mouth have a role to play your heart and your mouth are we together it says and you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead hallelujah it says thou shalt be saved verse 10 it says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so watch this now an innocent person who just comes and hears the gospel what is the gospel the gospel is the declaration of the love of the father revealed the love of the father revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus are we together now yes that jesus came walked upon the earth died a shameful death went to Hades, the place of the dead, defeated Satan, seen hell and the grave, resurrected by the glory of the Father. Are we together? That he revealed himself to men. He went to heaven, was coronated as Lord and Christ, and that he's today seated as King of kings and Lord of lords. That is the gospel. Because you see, the Bible says that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Are we in agreement on that? And the Bible says that by one man, Adam, that all of us inherited that nature of sin. And that no man upon the strength of his righteousness will ever be qualified to stand before God. So Jesus came as a revelation of the Father's love. This is very important. He came as a revelation of the Father's love. That instead of everybody dying his death, he put upon himself the death of everyone. Are we together now? that in dying on the cross he did not die alone we died in him when he went to hades the place of the dead defeated satan sin hell the grave and resurrected triumphantly the bible says he ascended to heaven and a coronation service was held for him in heaven the lord said to my lord sit thou at my right hand until i make thy enemies thy footstool is that true then apostle paul now gives us an intelligent new testament exegesis of it in philippians chapter 2 when you read from verse 5 to 10 he says wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name an office that is above every other name is that true he says at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things in the earth of things under the earth and every tongue should confess that that jesus is not just savior now but he has become lord even to the glory of the father this is what the bible teaches so when an unbeliever hears this watch this the spirit of the living god while the gospel is being preached the spirit of the living god is hovering around the heart of that unbeliever remember what jesus said the holy ghost would do he says when he comes he will convict you of three things number one of sin number two of righteousness and number three of judgment are we to, are we together that he will reprove the world so whilst you are preaching 
it could be through a story it could be directly from scripture the holy ghost is quickening the heart of that unbeliever bringing the person to a point where he sees the crucified and the glorified jesus so that when you now make an altar call that person comes to jesus now when he comes to jesus the truth is that in many regards he may not even know what journey he's about to begin but he just knows that he's sincere and he wants to take advantage of that love that was shown him are we together so step one that any believer who wants to live a life of exploits any individual who wants to be mightily used by god to accomplish purpose and destiny as intended by god more than getting a job more than being a nice person more than serving in church god's modus operandi god's protocol is that the starting point of the believer's journey is a genuine encounter with the lord jesus christ you believe that shout a loud amen So there are people who come out for altar call and they never say anything some of them are pinching one another while prayer is happening and then they say amen and they say all of you move this way they were not saved because the bible says that when you come there has to be a participation of your heart am, am i am i right on that and a participation of your it is not coming out that gets you saved it is not crying that gets you saved that recognition and that confession of the lordship of jesus christ and the bible says whether you feel something happen to you or not the moment you satisfy that spiritual condition the integrity of god insists that eternal life be imparted to your spirit this it has nothing to do with a feeling that the moment i confess jesus as lord i believe that he died he rose again for me genuinely at that instant no matter how rotten your life is no matter how bad things have been at that instant feeling or no feeling the reality is that from the realm of the spirit eternal life has been credited to you now there are times that someone sends you money are we together now and the person tells you i've sent it but maybe you are not able to go to the bank or you are waiting for an alert and it does not come sometimes you get so nervous and frustrated and you call the person and say i'm still waiting and I say no 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 it's done i've given it to you depending on an alert sometimes the person will tell you there are network issues but that does not stop the fact that since morning i've sent it to you now there is supposed to be a way you behave when you are truly aware that that alert has come is someone learning now but because you are for instance if we were supposed to walk boldly and go into a supermarket or a store to buy something because you know that your card can pay for it and the person has transferred hundred thousand but because you have not gotten the alert or you have not felt like you have it you will not dare enter that supermarket because you are afraid of embarrassment you may even be angry with the person and the person tells you look i've finished this thing since morning this is how it is with many believers because they are depending on feelings to believe they do not know that it is a faith work it has nothing to do with what you feel there are times that there could be a lot of dramatic physical experiences but that based on the integrity of jesus christ himself the moment you confess jesus as lord you believe that he rose from the dead the bible says you are saved you have encountered the son of the living god say amen, amen. now as powerful as that experience is listen carefully that is only the initial experience take note of the word initial this is where many believers are cheated and this is what produces a lot of inefficiency in church because now many believers are genuinely saved but they do not know how the kingdom operates now please look at me this is a beautiful region and you farm a lot here how many of you when you farm tomato right you are seeing lovely red ripe tomato and you put it in a basket and just leave it outside like that forever what is going to happen to that tomato now does it stop it from this was tomato that was looking fresh looking nice but because you left it there 
Are we together now? Yes. What is the difference between the tomato you kept there and the one in a container that somebody will pay 5,000 naira for? I thought they are all tomato. But what is the difference? One has been processed. You kept one there and nothing happened until it started rotting. This is what is happening to so many believers. So they get saved and genuinely saved but because they do not know what else to do, they remain in church, they are angry, they are bored. The same things that they used to face before they got born again, they are still facing it now. And there does not look like there is any advantage whatsoever in being saved. And this is where Satan comes. And Satan now says, you were poor before and after. You were sick before and after. You were failure before and after. Are we together? You were still driven by sin before and after. What then is the advantage of that salvation? And many people say it's true. I just wasted my time in church. Because you see, the moment you get saved, please listen carefully. According to God's system of building men, the moment you get saved, the next thing that you really need in your life, please listen. The next thing that you need in your life is the ministry of a teaching priest the ministry of a teaching priest in partnership with the word of god and in partnership with the holy spirit becomes your next port of call what is the assignment of the teaching priest jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and the bible says they shall feed you with knowledge and they shall feed you with understanding just because you have a textbook does not mean you will read on your own and become a graduate the lecturer recommends a textbook but you still need to attend lectures am i right on that while the lecturer is teaching you now you begin to understand what is written there even if it is the lecturer's own textbook he still needs to teach you methodically my goodness there are many many people right now some of you sincerely looking at me there is such a great call upon your life you go to bed and you have dreams you are seeing yourself on crusade grounds you are seeing yourself minister to people with power some of you god has spoken to you that the destiny of this region is tied to you but because you do not understand the protocol the way god trains men to become mighty there are many people today who should be upon the pulpits ministering with power and grace and they are somewhere like elisha roaming around not knowing that they have the destiny of a prophet are we learning now so you are saved now you encounter the ministry of the holy spirit the ministry of the word and the ministry of the teaching priest a teaching priest means a man or a woman of God or any believer who has been transformed himself who now begins to subject you through that process of transformation everyone say transformation please shout that word say transformation, transformation. that is the next most important step and look at me please this is the longest journey in the believers faith experience the journey of transformation it is not a journey that happens in one week it's not a journey that happens in fact transformation also doubles as your process of training please listen carefully that when you are saved the holy ghost begins to bring through the ministry of the teaching priest line upon line now you begin to learn the ways of the kingdom look up please you begin to learn things like the ministry of prayer the supremacy of the word of god you begin to learn the place of character consecration are we together you learn the value of the house of god you learn the economic system of the kingdom you learn about demons about satan how to manifest victory if you are fortunate to be under a sound teaching priest he can accelerate your process of transformation but unfortunately and i say this with all due respect and this is where we men of god must make sure that god helps us to understand the kingdom fast because the people god commits to us will be transformed at the rate of our own transformation 
and the rate of our own understanding. That means all I know is all I'm going to teach. And unfortunately, if what I know is little, I will teach that little and keep God's people down for a long time. They are hungry, they are thirsty, except that the teaching priest has not studied to show himself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. This is the challenge with many of our churches, respectfully speaking. It's not that the members don't want to grow. It's that the teaching priest himself does not understand the kingdom and does not even, he has not been given the blueprint for the methodical mentorship of the believers. The name given to the entire process that matures the believer from the point of being saved until he's transformed is called discipleship. Now, discipleship means many things across many denominations, unfortunately. But the biblical expression, the, 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 the journey of the believer from the point of being saved to the point of transformation is called discipleship. Who is a disciple? A disciple is a student. One who is committed to learn methodically under a mentor. Are we together now? Under a teacher, under a coach, under a supervisor. A disciple is also one who is being subject to training. Now listen, every coach here or everybody here who has been involved in raising people, you cannot raise people effectively until you know what they are supposed to become. Am I right on that? Again, let me use the university system. Please look at me. How many of you know that the moment, let's say you want to study medicine, the moment you get admission from 100 level, you already have an idea of what you become. Am I right on that? You have not become it, but you have seen who looks like what you want to become. That is what gives you the staying power to endure. Who for the joy that was set before him? Is that in your Bible? The Bible says he despised the shame. Let me tell you this. Many believers are not staying to be trained by God because a picture of the end point, the end product has not been given. So the young man does not yet know. He just knows that I pray God uses me. But the moment you show him that listen, when you begin to walk with God, if you walk with God sustainably, after some time, this is what you are going to become. The person keeps walking with God while he, he checks himself. And if you have not attained unto that, you will not stop. Is God helping somebody now? Yes. Let me have, um, are you a pastor? That man on white suit. Come, come. Let me have another gentleman, any gentleman, please come. Pastor, please come. Stand here. Watch this. Everybody, I want you to look at this. Please stand here. Just stand facing me. Please stand here. Watch this. Now, I am a teaching priest. Are we together now? Look at me. This, you're a pastor? This man of God, let's assume he's a new believer. Are we together now? Do you know that walking this believer through a pathway, he is going to be frustrated until I give him an idea of what he will one day become. Now, by the time he's able to see this man from beginning, even when he gets tired, I'm going to tell him, look at what you are becoming. And when he goes halfway, he will see that his clothes is now changing to white too. Not everything is changing, but something is happening. Are you getting the point now? So many people are not able to endure sound doctrine because they do not even know what the goal of discipleship should be. Are we together now? When you stand in front of an ATM machine, you already know that at the end of it, you are going to withdraw your money. So even if it's after 30 minutes, even when you are complaining, you will still endure because you know what you are going to remove there. Many believers hate church, run away from church, run away from men of God, run away from meetings. You know, 
It's not because they hate God. It's simply because the end product has not been revealed to them from scripture and by revelation. Let's go back now. So watch this. This gentleman from a crusade in Yola, let's say he got saved in 2015 and there is a call upon his life. Now, he may not even know that God is raising him to be a mighty vessel from Yola to the ends of the earth. Now, God brings him to me as a teaching priest. Whatever I make out of this man, God will hold me accountable. Do you know why? Because there are destinies connected to this man by prophecy. And the assignment is that the Holy Ghost, in partnership with the Word of God and in partnership with a teaching priest, will now build this gentleman. So watch this. I begin to mentor him and teach him on the rudiments of prayer. Teach him who he is in Christ. Watch the progress he's making. Gradually, Sunday after Sunday, he's praying for one hour. Now he's praying for two hours. Now I'm beginning to test him. He's learning on giving. I'm teaching him. I'm training him. One day you will give him a, an opportunity to lead prayer for five minutes. He will lead the prayer and make all his mistakes. No problem. He's a student. You are helping him. Is somebody learning now? The day he will come to lead that prayer. Listen, it is in the process of leading that prayer. He will now go back and say, why did I just lead that prayer and everybody was saying there's something about you? Let me teach you something. When you start with Jesus, your destiny is not revealed to you. It is only Jesus that is revealed. It is as you look at Jesus, you will start finding your destiny. Are you, are you, are you getting me now? When, when Jesus calls you, the mission is follow me, not follow it. So, you can find five young men. All of you got saved. And you started loving the Lord and going to church. Your attention is on Jesus. Let's assume now that this man is Jesus. Are we together? You are looking on to Jesus. Among the five gentlemen, one has been ordained to be a prophet. One has been ordained to be a kingdom financier. One has been ordained to be an apostle. Are we together now? One has been ordained to be, to serve in career. But they all do not know. It is as you look at Jesus and as you have been transformed, the Holy Ghost starts doing a work in you. That guy that wants to become a prophet will find out that an unusual grace for prayer starts coming on him. That is not like the other people. He does not even know what is happening to him. Others will pray for one hour and say, I need to go out. And it's like something will constrain him and say, you remain. Now, destiny is being unveiled. This is what has been happening to some of you that you do not even know. Now you are getting to a point of your training and your transformation. Am, am, I, am, I, am I speaking to you now? This process of discovering your destiny in Christ and remaining there, look up. This is what the Bible calls consecration. Now, for most people, our idea of consecration is not complete. The word consecrate has two expressions. Number one, the first dimension of consecration has to do with getting away from. Are we together now? Abstinence. And there are things the Bible tells us to flee from. But the second dimension of consecration has to do with devotion. So abstinence and devotion. If the only thing you have done is abstinence, you are not consecrated. To consecrate means to set apart. Now this gentleman in the process has now transformation is creating consecration. Are we together? The grip of the flesh. The grip of slumber, sin, all kinds of things is breaking in experience from his life. But that is not all that will make him great. Now he begins to find out from his prophetic destiny, like Jeremiah, that he was ordained to be a prophet. The second dimension of consecration is that that must become his singular goal. Now that you know your destiny in Christ, you must lay aside every weight 
and the sin that doth easily beset you and run with perseverance the race that is set before you. So you find out that this guy, this becomes his singular pursuit. And the Holy Ghost, listen, the Holy Ghost will start leading him through experiences that he may not understand initially. But the more he starts reading the Bible, he will find out that what is happening to him is what happened with every prophet God used. That means, listen, you can know your destiny by looking at the parallel of your training in scripture. The pattern of your training reveals where God intends to take you to. So, for someone you find out as a young lady in your teens, while other ladies are rushing and exploring all kinds of things, God seems to separate you. A gentleman comes to stand close to you. God wants you in a dream. Let me not see you with that gentleman again. And you are wondering, what is different about my life? It is the destiny of Esther that is calling. Is someone understanding now? It is the destiny of Mary. There is a particular consecration that leads to that destiny. Unfortunately, there are many people jumping and saying, I will be great, I will be great. No, it is not chanting it. There is a pathway that if you do not follow, you will never become that person. Do you understand what I've said so far? So the gentleman finds out that he has, the more you are walking with God, the more you are learning under your pastor, there is such an unusual acumen for revelation and understanding. Even among his peers, they begin to say, this guy is intelligent. You know, his intellectual acumen, his ability to understand scripture. What kind of grace is looking for this guy? The Holy Ghost is diverging him to the place of his destiny. This person will now become a mighty apostle of the spirit. Opening scriptures. Or a gentleman, you find out that the more you are loving God, you are serving in church. It looks like great people always seem to identify you. When they want to do something, you are the one. They, they don't even know what is driving them. It is because there is a Daniel in you crying. Listen. Do you understand what I'm teaching you so far? That the reason why many believers do not become great. Please pastor, come again. Is that when they are saved, they just sit down. What they tell them is discover your purpose. In other words, sit down, crack your brain and just guess what you want to become. No. The Bible says we have been predestined. The word predestined means God is not scratching his head wondering what you will become. In Christ, there is a portion for you already. But entering into the experience of it is predicated upon the pathway you follow. When you follow the pathway of Elijah as Esther, you will not become Esther. You will become Elijah because the pathway of Elijah leads to Elijah. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? So as the pastor begins to train you, the Holy Ghost begins to improve on that training and you find out that sometimes out of so many people, you are the only one who seems to go, be going through a particular kind of training. God is raising you to be a kingdom financier and you find out that while you are praying one day, God will tell you, empty your account he will not tell everybody because everybody is not following that pattern but you because of what he's trying to produce it's not about money he's killing greed and he's crucifying mammon in your life because he will be trusting you with billions for the kingdom and he has to help you so that that dimension of flesh is broken so you will find out that to many people around you you are not making sense to them you were giving 100,000 and you gave it away. You said, God said. Another 500,000 came and you gave it away. Ah, something must be wrong with you. But you see, when you complete that training, there is a kind of believer you will become where God will trust you with one billion and you say, Lord, it is still your money. And people are saying, how come you are not connected to it? And you tell them, I was trained well. During the process of training and transformation, God led me through a pathway. Am I right on that? Now, back to the university system. 
The pathway that produces a doctor is not the pathway that produces an engineer. It's not a pathway that produces an architect. Am I right on that? The assignment of the university is to be an institution that has several pathways leading to several fields. So if they give you admission, are we together now? The lecturer and the system helps to direct you. How many of you know that sometimes when you are dealing with people who are working across science-based subjects, in 100 level, they do almost everything together. But it is not everything they are becoming. Both the engineer, the doctor, somebody who is reading, whatever. They are attending the same lectures. But the divergence will happen eventually. When 100 level is done. So five of you, you are all praying. You are all fasting. You are loving the Lord. But you soon find out that this sister's training has started changing. This sister's training, her passions are changing. It's not the same like everyone's passion. That is destiny in Christ calling. When you see those you call great, it's not that God chose to make them great all of a sudden. It was in their destiny. The difference between you and them is that they found the pathway that was going to lead there. And they followed it accordingly. Do you understand what I'm teaching you now? Now watch this. This gentleman has the destiny of a prophet. God wants him to be great. But this gentleman did not have an opportunity to be mentored by a great pastor. And so he became careless. Look at where he should be going. And according to God's program for his life, God's program for his life is that by the time he gets to 30 years, he should have started manifesting. But this gentleman is celebrating his birthday, 28, 29. And while they are clapping on earth, heaven is saying, souls are dying. The people you were mandated to prophesy to have remained because it was in your destiny to open the doors for them. Are you getting it now? So every time he goes to bed, the Holy Ghost comes and uses some of the dreams that you people are seeing. He will see himself prophesying to people. Is the Holy Ghost quickening in him and saying, you don't need to rest. Something is crying within you. One day they will give him a mic to lead prayer. And he will stand to lead prayer. In Jesus name, five minutes prayer becomes 15 minutes. And he drops the mic and does not even know why. He touched a bit of the anointing he should be using. And that's what produced that result. And yet he will return back. Look at me. This man can become 70 years old. And what was in the heart of the father never finds expression. And then he can create his own destiny because God gave you a will. He now has children. He now has whatever it is. Can I tell you, when God is rewarding men, there is no reward for this guy based on his destiny even though he's saved because the reward is to the degree low i come in the volume of the book as it is written of you to do thy will not what i want your will so are you understanding what i'm teaching you now there was a little boy in the Bible called Samuel. When, do you know why God had to allow Hannah to vow a vow before Samuel came? If she did not have to wait that long, Samuel will never become a prophet. Because she would not take him to the temple. But the training demanded that he will leave his physical father and mother. This is how this destiny thing is serious. That there are some of you, you did not grow up with your parents. You don't even know why. Because your parents would never have allowed you to come for a meeting like this. So God had to literally make you get admission in a university you did not plan for. That is how much God can move people to make sure they find that pathway. Samuel, you have the destiny of being the great Israel, but your mother cannot train you. No, it is not given to her. 
Your father Elkanah cannot train you. It will take Eli to train you. But the compassion of your parents will not allow them to release you for destiny. So God had to wait until Anna said, Lord, I covenant with you. If you give me that child, I will not interrupt the part of his training. She prayed once, once, and Samuel came. When Samuel came, watch this. Samuel is sleeping close to the ark. Look at the kind of consecration that brought that prophet. I hope you know Samuel did not even have an opportunity to do many things because he was in the temple. His vessel had to be so pure to carry that kind of mantle that will ordain kings. So because of that, there was no risk. God had to make sure he remained in the temple. And one night, the boy was sleeping and he hears a voice. And he got up and went to Samuel. And Samuel said, no, 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 no. Uh, Eli. And Eli said, no, go back and sleep. And he went back to sleep. Hmm. And the voice came again. And when he came, Eli got up. Uh, Samuel got up and went to Eli. And Eli said, I'm not the one. But he said, ah, I understand. There is a path God takes men who will become prophets. Your season is starting. He said, next time when he speaks, I am your teacher, but I'm not your only teacher. There is another teacher too. We are in partnership. Say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And that became what gave birth to the mighty Samuel. If Samuel did not rise, Saul will not rise. The kings that you see would not rise because he was the one who ordained them. Only God knows how many people today who would have been healed if you had found your path early in life. Only God knows how many people today as a kingdom financier you would have stopped their children from becoming prostitutes if only you manifested. Consecration is not just abstaining from sin and distractions but wholeheartedly devoting yourself to that which your destiny demands. The Bible says no man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this world. You know what that means? That when you discover Jesus, you will find your place. There is a way he will start building you. There is a kind of believer you will start becoming. And find it. He says, stay there. Let me submit to you that process of transformation, which doubles as the process of training, is the hardest period for a believer's life. Because even if you are a husband and a wife, your trainings will be different. Hmm. This is where men are separated from boys. And God can give this man an instruction and say for the next two years, every 12 midnight to 3 a.m. in the morning, I will be meeting with you. So you find out that this guy, whereas for another person, he has the luxury of sleeping. But because of what God needs to do in his life, 12 a.m., the Holy Ghost is there in his room. <sighs> and he wakes up. He can be tired. Sometimes you can pity him and say, won't you rest? And heaven says, no. There is a kind of person he needs to become. And the king's business requires haste. Every day, 12 to 12 sometimes with sleepy eyes you are praying sometimes with sleepy eyes you are studying and one day the God of heaven the one who visits men he will visit this gentleman and give him a call and place a mantle on his life it is when that mantle comes and you begin to see what that mantle can do you look at his life and say is this not the carpenter's son uh -uh. he was the carpenter's son but this version of him is not the carpenter's son. This is Ephesians 2 and verse 10. This is what he has become. We are his workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus. Look at it. Ephesians 2 10. I'm saying this because we are going to pray. Somebody must. Your destiny must be redirected back. Redirected back. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained 
before ordained that we should walk in them. Anybody you see that you admire in the kingdom, whether as a preacher, as a businessman who loves Jesus, can I tell you, midwifing their salvation experience and their manifestation was this painful season of training. Can I give you one more example? The Bible talks about a young boy called Joseph. Joseph was the least of his brothers. Am I right on that? The innocent boy went to go and sleep and suddenly had a dream. In that dream, he saw the sun, the moon. Please give me a bit of, increase the volume for me a bit so that we'll pray. The sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowing. He got up and came to his brothers and said, Daddy, I went to bed and this is what I saw. And Jacob looked at him and said, Ah, so among all my children, finally I've seen the person. This is the one the mantle is looking for. So one day you are saying, I will bow to you. Your mother will bow to you. When the brothers had it, they were angry. But for as long as Joseph was willing, there was a pathway. Don't just celebrate the Joseph in the palace. Celebrate the one who agreed to go and see his brothers that entered the pit. When Joseph was in the pit, I'm sure he would say, God, what is this? What is the meaning of this? Why am I the only one who is in the pit among my brothers? Then he was sold. You would have called it retrogression. But look at the invisible hand of prophecy that was moving that boy. I hope you know Egypt was his place of dominion. Look at how he got there. He gets to Egypt and he begins to serve Potiphar. And that grace on his destiny was so speaking to the point that Potiphar's wife, huh? Potiphar's wife now looked at the innocent gentleman. And when she looked at him, the Bible says she began to seduce him and look at what he had to, he had to, he had to, to endure so much. Eventually, it took him to the prison. The prison is a mysterious place in the path of destiny because the prison is where both good and bad people meet. The prison is like the cross. Jesus, you will still hang there. If you are a thief, you will still hang there. So don't judge people when you see them on the cross because you will not know who is Jesus and who is the thief. The cross is where both good and bad people hang. The prison is where both Joseph and the wine presser is there. These are two areas and these are two places in life and destiny when you find yourself in the and you find yourself in the cross you must be sensitive joseph is in the prison watch this not knowing that is the path to destiny and then overnight to cut the long story short that young boy rises and becomes a prince in egypt and Pharaoh said, I am Joseph and it is only at thy word that things will happen in Egypt. Now you would admire him and say, I love Joseph. I want to be like Joseph. No, there is a pathway that leads to Joseph. Joseph is not only a name. Joseph is a code that reveals a kind of believer. Esther is a code that reveals a kind of believer. Elijah is a code that reveals a kind of believer. Are we together now? Gideon, all these names you call in the Bible, they are not just names of human beings. They are, they are secret pathways in the spirit that men can follow, including Jesus. Apostle, I sense that I carry the destiny of Abraham. You better be ready to give up Isaac. You better be ready. Uh -uh. If ye be, <laughs> it says if you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. I want a double portion of Apostle Paul's mantle. Apostle Paul is not just the name of a man. There is a road in the realm of the spirit that is named in honor to such a man. You see, do you know why God names himself as God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? The God of Abraham is not the God of Isaac in terms of the manifestations. It is still the same God. But the way God deals with you as the God of Abraham is not the way he deals with you as the God of Isaac. This man, 
pioneered virgin dimensions in spirit to the point that God named himself after their experience. So he said, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He said, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Then he says, this is the generation that seek you, that seeks you, O God of Jacob. Do you know what that means? The God of Jacob is the God of encounters. Every time you want an encounter, God will refer you to the experience of Jacob because a man walked with God and pioneered that virgin dimension in the spirit that anytime a man wants an encounter with God, the biblical figure to study is Jacob. Your assignment is that at the end of your life, your destiny will add to the names of God. That there should be a kind of name that God will be called on account of your experience. Your experience should give God a name. Isaac, Jacob and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob are not the only names God wants to be called. He wants to be called the God of Joshua Selman. But you see, it's not just to say the God of Joshua Selman in terms of an anointed man. No. It is a pathway in the spirit that you follow. You follow it so excellently. God honors you by naming himself. Now, watch this. So every time you come to God and God reveals your destiny to you, you will have an array of spiritual pathways that leads to specific kinds of believers you will all be believers but the geography of your assignments are not the same so if you see yourself being esther in the spirit your next assignment is to find out the path esther followed did the bible not say follow them who through faith and patience so the lady now begins to study the life of esther what did esther do the Holy Ghost starts leading you through that pathway. You want to be a great apostle Paul and you find out that five years after graduation, it looks like God has not told you what to do with your life. You want to walk, he stopped you. You want to travel abroad, he stopped you. You want to open a church, he stopped you. What should I do, oh God? You just pray, fast and serve. Is that all I'm going to do with my life? Uh -uh. There is a kind of believer you are becoming and that kind of believer that is consistent with my will for you will demand that you go through this pathway is someone learning now show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest listen when I started walking with God, you see, I would go to bed in the night and I would have visions of saints and people who had departed. I was seeing the faces of many people in the Bible. I did not understand what God was doing. God was revealing that apostolic blueprint and the destiny but knowing where I was going was not enough. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you get to a point where God now holds your hand and says, now that I've shown you a bit of the picture, can we go? You see, you choose as an... Can I use this? Okay. Please help me if I'm doing something wrong. Do you know you can choose to be tired and say, Lord, this journey is too long and it's a senseless journey and God will respect your will and leave you yes sir jesus was training the disciples to become what apostles this is how he taught he was training them that he would simply stop them from fishing defeat pontius pilate and any other person and then they will become great kings or co-rulers that was their plan but jesus kept driving them from crusade after crusade 
they were looking for trouble of the Roman government. One day they got angry. They said, see, we have left all to follow you. We don't know this path you are taking us to. And Jesus said, aha, there is, there are a kind of believers I am turning you to become. They didn't understand. Peter was angry. James was angry. They were all angry. Little did they know they would become apostles of the Lamb. But it was not just by confessing their destiny. It was following a particular pathway. When Jesus died, ah, I sense a strong anointing here. Mm. When Jesus died and resurrected, he said, gentlemen, you have continued with me. You have stayed with me. Now, wait at the upper room. The power of the Holy Ghost will come on you. That is the last phase. I will discuss that tomorrow. Because it is salvation, then transformation, then empowerment. Empowerment is useless when there is no transformation. Transformation also talks of consecration, talks of destiny discovery. After enduring that season of training, now your vessel is expanded and you're ready for the oil. There are many people who just get saved. And all they want is impartation. Look at the ministry of Jesus. The ratio of teaching and mentorship to transformation. Three and a half years to one day. Man of God. This is the answer as to why you think you are not as powerful as you should be. Because all you are chasing after is anointing. But there is a pathway in the spirit. Apostle, why wouldn't God trust me and make a generation listen to me that space is available but there is a kind of believer that must carry that mantle and there is a pathway you must follow to become that kind of believer you want to speak to the sick and just have them get up it's not by saying stand up from wheelchairs you will embarrass yourself a thousand times there is a path in the spirit you must follow this is my first message tonight are you willing to follow that path in the spirit the bible says narrow is the way is that in your bible it didn't say that leads to heaven the way to heaven is not narrow the way to heaven is jesus narrow is the way that leads to life you begin that journey and sometimes you don't even know what you are doing people can insult you and say i thought you were going to become a great person you are an embarrassment to everybody and sometimes you will be walking alone. God, where are we going? One year, two years, three years. One day, God will encourage you by giving you an opportunity to preach in one crusade ground. And you will see wheelchairs and crutches and you will be afraid. Because you see, he will not show you what is happening to you so you are not distracted. He's keeping your face on him. But you are not even aware you are changing. Moses did not know he had changed till he came down and saw him. The moment that happens to you, while pride wants to enter you quickly, he will take you. Let's continue the training. And while others are clapping and saying the crusade was a great one, God will talk as if he did not even see what you did. That is the training of the spirit. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, there is a level that you contend and have power with God where God will place something upon your head and give you the key of a generation and say go I've trusted you these are the kind of people the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings listen ladies and gentlemen this anointing thing that people think it just happens by impartation no matter how much oil the anointing itself eh, as an instruction that activates it. The anointing looks for death to walk. If the anointing does not find death, it will not work. And the pathway to death is this path that Job said there is a path which no fowl has gone to. That the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. This is why many people, although we are all saved, our destinies are different because others have chosen to take serious the ministry of the teaching priest. 
to take serious the ministry of the Holy Spirit, to take serious the ministry of the word, and by looking unto Jesus, their preordained destiny started being revealed. It is from Jesus you find your destiny. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. Not follow it. Here's what we do. I want to become an anointed man and we follow Jesus. No, that is already a corruption. You follow him for him. It is while you are following him, you will start evolving into a strange kind of believer. When you evolve into that strange kind of believer, then those who want to attest to your training now will call you Reinhard Bonke. Others will call you Benihin. Others will call you T.L. Osborne. They are not just names of men. They are graduation certificates that people went through a school in the spirit. How does an ordinary woman called Catherine Coleman, a woman who does not even speak loud, where, where did she get the kind of power, the force? It is beyond just a man laying hands on you. It's, just, it's beyond a two weeks Bible study. It's beyond a one year Bible school. It's a part in the spirit. You follow alone. It may be a painful part. You may cry, but you follow. You follow by instruction. But happy is the man who endures the dealings of the spirit. Because the end of it is power with God. Listen, you will sustain an ability in the spirit that will make you very, very, very strange. Oh, 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 oh. Hear me hear me can i tell you if the holy ghost comes here all he will be doing is looking for men that he will redirect them when he comes you say mr man you are following the path of joseph but this is the destiny of elijah go this way this is what happens in conferences like this redirections you find out that while you are standing no that two two hour prayer you were praying why did you stop go back that is the training of elijah why did you stop it listen please help those under the anointing listen you don't choose what path to follow it has been preordained when you follow jesus in following him diligently you will start evolving there is a kind of believer that you must assume for your purpose and your destiny to stand man of god the holy ghost will not just move in your meeting because you are in pentecostal there is a track record in the spirit a track record of death a track record of submission what name will you reveal to your generation on account of your training with the spirit yola where are those who god is looking for in this end time if there is a prophetic summon and every region is blowing their shofar where is the shofar of yola we are yet to hear it where are the apostolic and prophetic voices that have been trained by the spirit to rise and sound that alarm where are the prophetic psalmists where are the worshipers we're not talking of special number no we're talking of songs as loud as in the spirit
Even Jesus, your Jesus, watch this. You would think because he was the son of God, he will automatically become a savior. Do you know the difference between the baby in the manger? The teenager at age 12, the young man at age 30, the one hanging on the cross and the one sitting on the throne. They were not the same. No, the one in the manger was not just a teenager walking. That was training going on. At age 30, that baby had come, walked on by the Spirit of God. The Bible says, and the Holy Ghost drove him into the wilderness. There are many, many wilderness that is not the devil that drives men there. It's the Holy Ghost himself that drove men. And when he went there, he prayed, he fasted. And then the Bible says, Satan came to tempt him, overcame him by the word, and returned in the power of the Spirit. And when that happened, the heavens were opened over him. You want to become savior? Jesus did not become savior by teaching. When he taught, they did not call him savior. When he taught, they called him rabbi. To become savior, you die. You don't teach. The price for becoming a savior is not a teacher. The price for becoming a savior is death. And the Bible says, savior shall come out of Zion. So if you are going to be a savior to a generation, it will take more than Rema and Greek and Hebrew. No, the price for all of God is all of you. Your pride, your ego, your accomplishments. Tonight, hear me. I hear my spirit how long that's what God is saying how long will we wait for you how long will we wait for your manifestation how long until prophecy comes to pass in your life how long until the healing anointing starts working how long until the prophetic is activated how long until the apostolic is released hallelujah my assignment tonight listen please do not miss tomorrow the morning and the night session but i'm going to pray a very brief prayer for you right now my prayer for you tonight is for a quickening grace there are many of you time already against you i want to release that grace there is the quickening grace of the spirit that can cause you to be alive unto god alive unto righteousness consecrated set apart unto that which your destiny demands in christ this is my prayer for you and as that grace comes upon you I want you to leave this place tonight with the consciousness of that grace the consciousness of the working of that spirit for some of you that grace will cause you to begin to repent of certain ways for some of you that grace will cause you to submit to the purging of the spirit that certain things leave your life for some of you that grace will activate your prayer life again activate your word study life activate your passion for the things of god father i stretch my hands upon the men and the women in this place in the name of jesus christ at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus the one who is deserving of your followership and as you shout that name grace will rest upon you are you ready now one, two, three, shout Jesus. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace.
that grace. Take that grace. Please bring them out very quickly. Can you bring them out? Whether you are an usher or not, just bring those under the anointing quickly. In the name of Jesus, that anointing is coming upon you. Coming upon your prayer life. Whether you are an usher or not, please bring them out quickly. Just direct them. Can, can someone help me speak to them so they understand what I'm saying? Those under the anointing, please bring them out for me. Whether you are an usher or not, you pick them and bring them out. That's what I'm saying. There is a reason why I ask that they come out. I'm seeing fire. Fire. And I'm seeing the number 27. The Lord is saying he's reigniting the Christian experience of many. I don't know where you are, but at the count of three, you will shout that word fire. One, two, three. Burning everything. Everything that needs to die should die. Everything that needs to burn should burn. Everything that needs to give way should give way. Destiny beckons on you. Your preordained destiny beckons on you. Hallelujah. 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 Hear me. I'm hearing saviors of families. There are some of you, the mantle to deliver your families on you. I don't know where you are, but I stretch my hands. May that mantle find you now. You are the one ordained by destiny to deliver your family from witchcraft to the apakatos ketebata to deliver your family do not allow the devil destroy your family do not allow the devil take your family members to hell i release that mantle that call of destiny saviors of families saviors of families saviors of families You may not look like it, but go through the training. You may not look like it, but follow the pathway in the spirit. The end of it is power. The end of it is glory. The end of it is grace. Even grace multiplied. whether you are young or old I came to call for something from within your spirit deep calling on to deep deep calling on to deep we are wrapping up already deep calling on to deep and even those of you outside don't think because you are outside you are out of the program open up your spirit and receive that which God is doing. Hallelujah. Before I pray for those in front, there are two prayers we are going to pray tonight. The first prayer is a prayer of repentance. To repent means to realign back to God's pattern. Open your mouth right where you are and say, Father, I repent. Of carelessness, I repent. Of giving room to all kinds of things in and around my life. Are you praying? Oh. 
Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Ya Yesu Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na na kane Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Ya Yesu Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na na kane Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na na kane let me pray for all those in front. Father, you have brought these ones by your spirit, young and old. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. That apostolic fire, that ignition that has come upon you. For many of you, it's a fire unto repentance. For some of you, it's a fire unto pruning. For some of you, it's a fire unto purification. Purifying every dross, every flesh, and everything that must give way for the glory I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus may your training with the Spirit begin may your training with the Holy Ghost begin may your training with the Holy Ghost begin may men and women of power emerge from this conference hallelujah please hear me tomorrow morning and tomorrow night particularly if you are a man of god please do not miss the remaining part of the session there is what i want to show you by the spirit my assignment in coming to yola is to stand in partnership with the holy ghost to produce men of glory and power indeed not just men of god that that veil be torn from your eyes to show you that pathway that leads to glory indeed in the name of Jesus Christ for all of you who are in front here I ask that they bring you out so that I'll pray for you I declare that that hand of God upon your life it will not rest till your destiny emerges in the name of Jesus day and night you will have encounters by the Spirit until destiny is birthed in you for in Jesus name we pray my last function tonight, please no moving around. Those who are in front, as many of you who can, please, you can just rise and return back to your seat rejoicing. I want to make an altar call. Please listen carefully. An altar call is everybody's business. What is an altar call? It's a proposition that you come and make it right with Jesus. It is a proposition that you come and rededicate your life to Jesus position that you take Jesus seriously beyond church beyond man of God beyond religion hear me there are many of you from the time I began to teach using this man and this my dear pastor friends here as examples by the way God bless you gentlemen thank you may God honor you in Jesus name there's someone here you are up the balcony you are outside and the moment I began to teach the Holy Ghost was telling you this is you and he's calling you I don't care how long you have been in church I don't care what you have done or not done listen to me if you cannot come and make it right with Jesus there is no possibility for this kind of life that I describe his gift to you is righteousness his gift to you is life eternal I'm going to count one to five be mindful of those on the ground as you're coming so you don't match on them and I know there has to be someone. I'm not looking for everybody. But I'm looking for one sincere person. Who is saying, Apostle, I'm not going to lie. I need Jesus. Run like there's fire on the mountain. And come right in front. Come and stand here. I count one to five and I begin to pray. One. Are we celebrating them as they come? Come. Come, na doka kasu 
Nanka Ubangi Chika Isayabo Nakirma Masu Nanka Ubangi Nanka Masu Nanka Run to Jesus, don't sit back there. Oh, when the master beckons on you, come to him genuinely. Come, 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 apostle. I need to make it right with Jesus. Come, there's space for you. Come. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Some of you want to come, but you are ashamed of your friends. Leave them alone and come to Jesus. Can I tell you, there are some of you, the fire that has come upon you this night, even while you go home, in your bed, on your bed in your sleep this is a fire that will continue to burn even all through this conference that fire has come to stay now look at me please those of you in front i want to appreciate you for the courage to leave your seat leave your friends leave your ego leave your reputation and come and stand before jesus some of you are making this decision for the very first time but some of you are sincerely rededicating your lives you're saying, Apostle, I cannot truly say my work with Jesus Christ is effective. And the reason is because I've allowed all kinds of sins and weights. Jesus is giving you a new beginning. For all of you who are here, lift your right hand high above your head and say after me as loud and as clear as you can. And while they are praying this prayer, let me beckon on those who are following our viewers online across the globe those who might be watching live or those who are watching by way of rebroadcast just because it's a rebroadcast does not mean that it is late to make it right with jesus so as i lead these precious people to pray make sure that you participate in the prayer those in front here together say after me lord jesus, lord jesus. one more time say lord jesus, lord jesus. Tonight, tonight i have heard your word i believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God and I live for Jesus forever. God bless you. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you for this harvest. Many have come to you. In the name of Jesus and by the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are bona fide recipients of the life of God. From tonight until forever, the hand of God is upon you. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You go forward ever and backward never. And any satanic plot to thwart your Christian experience, I come against it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now here's what I want you to do for me. There are a number of you here. So I want you to follow, just turn to the back and you will see a, uh, there are counselors waving their hands. I know there are a number of you, but please just gently in concert, just follow these counselors. There are many of them, so they'll have a word with you very briefly and then you'll be back. Let's honor them as they go, everybody. Give them a big God bless you. Upper room, is this the best you can do? Yola. Hallelujah.
Now listen, I understand tomorrow. That, what time is tomorrow? Someone help me. 7 a.m. Tomorrow, 7 a.m., whatever it takes, please make your way here and come with your heart open to learn the ways of God. And then by the grace of God, tomorrow night our session will be a miracle service and an impartation service in the name of Jesus Christ. That the hand of the Lord will rest upon you and the Lord will be birthing destinies, releasing mantles, releasing graces. For now I decree and declare over your life that in the name of Jesus, as a result of this experience, may your passion for God, may your passion for Jesus and for the things of the Spirit be reignited. In the name of Jesus, I plant in you a fresh hunger for righteousness, a fresh hunger for God, a fresh hunger for the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap.